Hi there, thanks for clicking on this video. Today we're going to show you how to calculate the operating angles of your tail shaft and also how to measure them. Right, so this video will be in two parts. The first part will be uh, actually measuring the universal joints and, and working out what those angles are. And the second one will be using an online calculator to work out the operating angles. Now I've got the, uh, uh, the online calculator just in my hands here from Spicer Parts. And I'll read some numbers out in their notes here, which are really important, which relate directly to this car, because quite frankly, we've got a problem here, which is great because it'll be able to work through the issue and issue you might have. You can see how we measure and then how we fix the problem. Now. Uh, there's three basic rules here on their website. It says the universal joint operating angles at either end of the drive shaft should be at least half a degree. So that just means that the universal joint should have some, some degree in it. It should not be at zero. Uh, the universal joint operating angles at each end of the drive shaft should be within one degree of each other. So if you've got, say, two degrees on the front, you need to be either one, between one degree and three degree so to speak, on the rear. So it needs to be in one degree either way, so to speak. So, and for vibration-free performance, the universal operating angle should be no larger than three degrees. So realistically, that means it can't be zero. So between half a degree and three degree max is your operating uh, um, window, so there. So this, but the smaller angle there total is the best. Now, when I had originally built this, uh, I was positive I had about a one degree angle on the rear uh, and these angles are all measured for this calculator from the front of the car back so I had one degree what I would call one degree pinion up uh, but it would be one degree down in terms of this because the pinion is facing that but from the front to the rear it's classed as one degree down. Uh, I hadn't measured the tail shaft angle because I also thought that the uh, angle off the back of the gearbox was one degree down as well. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> that isn't the case. So I'll just show you now in the, in the calculator some of the angles that I've just found out that we actually have. If I calculate the angles, yeah, as you can see there, uh, we've got major problems. That is saying that the front angle is operating at eight degrees and the rear is operating at, 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 um, at six. Now, if you remember what those uh, three uh, key points were for operating angles of the universal joints. It was that first one has to be over zero. So tick, we're over zero, that's great. The second one was it has to be within a degree of each other. So uh, we're two degrees out there. So that's not, that's not great. We're, we're, you know, we're basically an extra degree above where we should be. But the third and most important one here is that the angles should not be greater than three degrees. And really, for great performance, it should be significantly less than three degrees. So we've got major issues, you know. So the front uni is operating at eight degrees and the rear one's operating at six. So what we need to do now to remedy that is uh, we can easily adjust the rear uh, pinion angle by adjusting the top bars on our forelink. We went over that on the video last over the how to set up your forelink. So we can easily adjust that. The front, the gearbox um, tail shaft uni is a little bit harder. So essentially what we have to do now is we've got like sort of one degree up. We want maybe about two degrees down. And the only way to do that is, yeah, essentially remaking a portion of the transmission cross member, which will then, if we're up, if the transmission cross member's up here, what we need to do is take some meat out of it. That'll drop the transmission down. And then in turn, of course, change the angle of uh, departure for that universal joint. So as you can see here, that's why this giant bar is here because we've removed the uh, transmission mounts, the, the, the rubber isolated mount that's in there. We are leveraging the front up here now of the engine to point the gearbox down. And we're gonna have to remake some of that rear cross member to get that pointing down. So uh, let's have a look at all that now, and then we'll come back and measure uh, we'll have a look at the calculator again on what uh, our rough estimate now is on the, uh, on the angles and have a look if we're in the ballpark. All right, so it might be a little hard to see, but right there, that's the front pulley of the engine. Now, what you may see is some people putting an angle finder like this. This is a, a digital um, angle finder. You can see it where it moves, angle changes. You might see people up here 
Um, whacking this just straight on there and getting an angle and going, oh, yep, that's all good. That's, that's whatever the angle is at the, um, at the tail shaft. Now, um, what the, the driven uh, driving member uh, uni. Now, that's fine as long as you know that, <laughs> that that pulley at the front for some reason isn't bent or buckled. You know, if you've got old stamped steel uh, pulley on an old V8 or something, they're often a little bit bent or edges are buckled over or whatever. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, this one's been... Uh, powder coated and stuff. So what happens if one bit of the powder coating is a little bit heavy on one side or whatever, you put this on, on that end and it's out by a degree or something, it's giving you the wrong measurement. So I don't really like measuring here. You can measure here, but I always like measuring the uni. So let's actually go measure the unis because that's the actual measurement of what the angle is. So let's go take a look at those and how you get the measurements to uh, get an exact number. Okay, so this is the uh, underneath of the car here. Obviously we've got the, this is just a, a tail shaft loop and the cross member here. This is where the gearbox mounts to the cross member. This is the gearbox output shaft uh, uni, and this is the our aluminium GJ drive lines tail shaft. Now, to get the angle uh, out of here, this flat surface right here is realistically where we want to, uh, to measure. So uh, if we put our calculator, our calculator, our level just on here, I can see at the moment it's saying uh, we are uh, just on about up of about 0.3 degrees. So um, that's obviously an issue for us. This being the wrong angle, essentially pointing slightly up still about half a degree is, is a major issue for us. What we're going to have to do to get it to point down is, is clearly reduce the distance. You can see there's a bit of air gap there between uh, where the gearbox mounts and where the uh, cross member is. So the more we reduce that distance, uh, you know, the more the angle of the gearbox will start to come down further and further. So what we've got to try and do here is reduce that distance to a point where instead of now we've got uh, a, half a, degree, a half a degree pointing up. So I've already reduced the distance by about one degree. It was one and a half pointing up approximately before. Uh, we've got to continue to reduce that the distance um, to, to the point where we get about probably about two degrees down um, would be would be ideal uh, and then and then we can play with it. So to give you an idea how much uh, space we've got working with here, this is the turbo 400 mount. It's like a urethane um, mount from energy suspension. It's a really hard sturdy mount, but if I want to put that in there now where it was originally, um, yeah, you can see sort of that we've already got to take almost this top section out of the cross member already. And uh, we might have to take even a bit more. So whilst it's come down, whilst we've had the cross member come down, or, I mean, the, the gearbox moved down already probably, oh, probably about 10 mil. We've probably got to move it down probably about another, oh, maybe about another 30 mil. And I think that should get us the other degree. So that's what we're going to do for this end. Let's take a look at how you measure the other two angles and then we can work out on uh, remedy for this one. Right, so measuring the uh, drive shaft angle really is uh, as easy as this. You just start, uh, <laughs> this is a magnetic uh, level, but obviously this is an aluminium uh, light series drive shaft from GJ Drive Lines. But if I put that on there now, I've uh, got drive shaft angle of 7.8. Now, before you know, I said our drive shaft angle was uh, six degrees. That's because you need to do these measurements while the vehicle is fully under its own weight. So you could see those uh, wooden blocks we've got there before. You would only measure this angle um, when the, the drive shaft angle when uh, the, the vehicle is supported under its own weight. I'm just showing you how to measure it now, but you don't do this free hanging because it'll give you the wrong, uh, the wrong measurements because yeah, they'll obviously be completely different. So let's uh, measure the, the uh, angle at the back of the diff here. And then, yeah, we'll get back to work on fixing all these angles. All right, last but by no means least is the angle for the diff here. Now, again, we just want to get uh, this one perfectly flat. So this is, again, this is the tail shaft here. This is a tail shaft uni, and this is the universal joint for the diff. So again, all I'm gonna do is put my angle finder. I'm gonna put it directly across there. I'm gonna read that angle and that's gonna be the angle 
uh, of for my opinion here. And, and again, so if it's facing what you look at here up, when you're putting it in that Spicer calculator, it's actually down because the measurements, the angles are based on from front to back. So, so the drive shaft is going on a downward slope. The, the yoke here for the pinion is also going on a downward slope, even though we may say, oh, it's, it's, the pinion is up. Uh, for this calculator, it's actually pinion is down. So uh, that's how you calculate those. Now we need to go back to remedying uh, the, the issue we've got with the gearbox being too high, so to speak fixing that pinion and then we might go adjust this a couple of degrees too and see what uh, we come out with at the end because at the moment we've got a seven and a half and we get seven and a half degrees up um, on or seven and a half degree rotational angle on the front one and five and a half on the rear one and we are well out of spec so let's try and fix all those now so if you've got those kind of problems too you can uh, fix them yourself as well Right, some adjustments have been made to the RX7 now uh, I'll just show you now how we've gone about that and uh, this is pretty much how we've done it. We've cut 40 millimeters out the top of the gearbox cross member. Uh, that has then given us the angle that we, uh, that we need to achieve. So let's just duck underneath the car and take a look at where the angles are sitting right now. All right, so if we remember what this angle was originally, it was about uh, one, one degree up. So if I just put this here now, we are at 2.7 down, that's great. If we just go a bit further down here, this angle was about seven or so degrees. If we have a look here now, we're at four. And finally, if we go to the diff, uh, not 100% level there, but uh, anyway, it's about two and a half as well. So. Not, uh, not real easy doing anything under the car here, so let's just get out and reconvene and discuss it. So those original measurements were absolutely horrendous. I think from memory, I'll flash them up on the screen there anyway, but they were seven degrees and five degrees or something like that. We know our goal was to be under three, significantly under three, and also the angles to be within one degree of each other. So I've just plugged those numbers in the updated ones. Let's have a look. And there's the results. Operating angles now of 1.3 degrees uh, for the front uni and 1.5 for the rear uni is absolutely fantastic. I'm pumped about that. That is exactly where we wanna be. Uh, it's well and truly under the maximum sort of, of, of three degrees. It's half of that. Uh, and the front and rear uni within 0.2 a degree of each other. So that's great. So uh, that is pretty much job done now. That's how you go about uh, altering um, angles of operation for your uni. So we didn't have to alter the, the rear uni, but it would have been a case of just adjusting those uh, top bars on our forelink to get it uh, in the right position. A little bit harder if you've got, uh, obviously set up with maybe leaf springs um, because the, the, the pinion angle is set basically when you weld the pads on the diff. So you may have to go about cutting and, and re-welding stuff. Uh, ladder bar, you'd have to adjust it out to try and get it right with the top link on the on the ladder bar, um, and then yeah, with the with the front uni to adjust that, you can see what we did. We just basically lowered our cross member, which meant that the engine over a plane like that just kept on getting lower and lower because we lowered this point here. So uh, that's great, something to keep in mind. But however, if you already have a tail shaft made for your car and you were looking to just change obviously the the angles of the of that the drive shaft and the operating angles of the uni um, if your engine is up here and you're looking to bring it down to here and your pinion say for your diff is here that changes the total length significantly so if your drive shaft was originally this long and now you're making it fit in this long obviously that means the drive shaft is needs to be shorter so you know if when it was at the longest length it really stuck into the gearbox a fair way what you might find is when you drop the gearbox down even by only like 40 to 50 mil like we have here it could be the difference of you know up to maybe an inch when you uh you know your drive shaft needs to be like an inch or so shorter we're very lucky we're still within um a really a really good window of it of it just fitting but not by a hell of a lot so it was we're, um, we're lucky it's still okay. It doesn't need to be remade because this is obviously a really expensive drive shaft. So you don't want to get into that trouble too. So uh, lesson here is 
get everything set up, measure it 800 times first, do your front pinion angle, do your, drive, do your uh, rear pinion angle first, and then go get your drive shaft made. Otherwise, yeah, you could be making your drive shaft twice and it'd be ultra expensive. So that's it. That's all the advice we got for you today on how to set up all those angles. Thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, if you want more of these tech videos, don't forget to subscribe, like this one if you liked it, uh, and share it on your socials. Until next time, I'll see you later.